Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a sunny Cambridgeshire. Today we are here at the home of Cheffins's uh, monthly machinery sale here at its purpose-built sale ground in Sutton. And we're basically here to have a good nosy. We're going to uh, dive behind the scenes and basically we're going to find out what goes on into putting on a uh, sale of this scale. So basically to help us do that, I'm now joined by uh, Oliver Goffrey, uh, Cheffins auctioneer, who's basically going to talk us through what goes on here. So, Oliver, we'll start with you. Um, obviously auctioneer, but uh, what's involved in your role? Quite a lot, it's a very diverse role. Uh, auctioneering is quite a small part of what we do. Uh, we travel the length and breadth of the country looking for quality second-hand machinery to dispose of, whether it be here through our monthly machinery sales or through on-site sales, whether that be live or timed online. Uh, so it's a very diverse role. There's a lot of valuation work that goes into it as well. There's photography, uh, there's everything in between really. But the auctioneering is, is quite a small part of what we do, very important part yeah, of what we do. Absolutely. Uh, but it's a very, very diverse role and very enjoyable. Okay, and is the, uh, you mentioned the auctioneering part is a small part, but is that the enjoyable part? Very much so. That is the culmination <laughs> of a lot of hard work. Uh, as an auctioneer, you've got to enjoy it, otherwise it's uh, not worth doing. But, it's, uh, but no, it's a very, very interesting uh, skill, uh, and it's something that I've been doing for the past 15 years, and every sale's different, throws up new challenges. Um, but yeah, it's very, very enjoyable. And I bet there's quite a few characters to deal with as well. Very much so. That's <laughs> one of the most important parts of the job, is the people we meet, uh, the social side of it, and that's why, unfortunately, the pandemic has curtailed that slightly, so it's lovely to see people back in the sale ground, uh, see a few faces. Um, it's all right talking to people on the phone, but it's nice to press the flesh uh, and rekindle those sort of friendships and uh, business relationships that uh, you know we haven't had to have over the last sort of year or so. Right, so let's let's get stuck into this uh, this mammoth place then. So let's uh, start with the sale ground. What what size is it? Is a rough so we're looking at just over 42 acres here of a, of a designated bespoke sale ground. Uh, there's a lot going on here, as you can hear. There's a lot of forklifts reversing. Uh, we've got a sale coming up in the next uh, three days so the guys are very very busy here we've got six forklifts running all day every day uh, there's a lot of machinery coming in tractors plant everything uh, so the guys are, are absolutely flat out there's a lot of cleaning going on as well which is post the last sale which is to do with the new phytosanitary certification from defra following brexit uh, there's photography going on up here uh, it's all going on i'm gonna say it, it is it is flat out here today. So roughly how many lots can you fit on the site then? So, I mean, on an average sale, we're looking at, at just over two and a half thousand, uh, but we have had well over 3,000 here. It depends the size of the lots. You can have thousands of small lots, but when you get up to sort of big excavators, big machines, big tractors like this, uh, the space it takes up is, uh, gets less and less and less uh, available for the next lots. But yeah, we can, we can accommodate several, several thousands. So speaking of the small lots, and the big lots just try and give us a, a vague understanding of just the variety that you have so we have different sections throughout the sale uh, we sell everything from spanners in the sort of uh, shed over there the building over there the auction hall that we've got uh, we've got um, utvs over there atvs we've got wheels and tires we move on to machinery, so we sell everything from pallet tines up to drills, tedders, which are very popular this time of year, big balers. Uh, then we have the tractor sale two, which is our export, um, so that's statically sold. Um, so there's older tractors there, and then we move on to the more modern tractors like this, uh, of which we've got uh, nearly 300 for the sale on Monday. Uh, and then we've got the plant section as well, so there's well over 200 whole good units on there. Um, so yeah, there's, there's plenty to go at. It's definitely diverse. Exactly. Yeah. So obviously you've got machinery coming from all over the place to here to be sold. Yes. Just give us an idea of the importance of these kind of sales. So what it does is we create a melting pot and one location for uh, traders, dealers, farmers to come to a one-stop shop. This is like a sweet shop. If you're looking for, uh, I don't know, a front weight block, something like that, uh, you know, we're one location, we're a sale on one day, so we offer a real sort of epicenter for machinery traders, plant traders to come on one day to it's a social event as well and anything else is also well to do business we've got catering here and everything else but basically we're providing a one-stop shop for those that are looking for for used quality machinery and over the many years that you've uh, been selling machinery here on this site and you know your previous sites before this uh, how would you say people's buying habits have changed over those years so there's different fads and fashions there's new um sort of evolve or emerging agricultural nations such as Sudan is quite a recent one for us. Um, they're buying a lot of 
uh, second-hand Massey Ferguson's 100, 200, 500 series, uh, and they like those machines. Uh, they, we've got a guy here who's constantly breaking them down, containerizing them, uh, and they're sent away, and then they're reassembled back where their destination is in Sudan, uh, and they're a good mechanical machine that their workforce can use. So that's been quite an exciting emergence as well. That, that sort of peaks and troughs, depending on sort of trade embargoes and other things going on in that country. Uh, we also had the Syrian trade for Fords and Majors as well, uh, a good few years ago. Um, in the sort of uh, late 80s, early 90s, so that was quite interesting. Um, but yeah, and there's also different machines like from Simba Solos, different drills, so there's, there's different fads and fashions, definitely. And uh, so what's, in terms of machines, what's kind of popular at the moment? What's sort of trending? Well, just good quality secondhand kit. Uh, with the pandemic, it's put pressure on new machines being delivered on time. Therefore, build dates have been pushed back and back and back. So anything that is good quality, straight to work machines, you know, hours quite, aren't quite so sensitive as they were, but as long as it's good, straight and tidy, that's really what the people are looking for. And you mentioned uh, a couple of little challenges that we've faced over the last 18 months, COVID, Brexit, weather's always playing a part. Just explain some of the impacts that those challenges have had on Jeffins. So, I mean, we effectively, as of last year, we lost the April monthly machinery sale. We, we closed because of obviously what was going on with the pandemic. There was a lot of uncertainty. It was a very challenging time for everybody. Uh, we took the view that we would cancel that a, uh, April sale last year. Uh, and then we launched a, a purely online platform, live bidding, uh, as well as timed online. It was sort of a hybrid auction uh, in the May. And basically that we were very apprehensive about it because it was something that we hadn't ever done before. We needn't have bothered. We have a very, very quality, robust online bidding platform and uh, we've got some very robust buyers uh, and they turned their hand to that very quickly. We had the drive through, but we sold literally to a laptop for a few hours, uh, but it worked fantastically well because, you know, whilst there was a lot of tragedy going on, the world kept turning. The, the demand for secondhand machinery didn't abate at all. So uh, we, we continued to offer that service. So that was a challenge. Uh, and then when, ease, when the lockdowns eased a bit, we sort of welcome people back recently um, which again has been been you know very encouraging who knows what's going to happen in the future but at least we know we can accommodate uh, and provide a good service for, for selling second-hand machinery uh, there's also been uh, brexit which um, has not been frictionless by any means um, there's also been deference initiative for the phytosanitary cleaning of exported goods so we had to put in a uh, vast expense, a uh, dedicated wash bay. Um, so we've got a team there constantly washing machines post-sale. Uh, then they are uh, certificated and inspected by a DEFA representative every Friday. Um, so that's quite a task in itself. And that keeps the guys really, really busy. Uh, but it's a service that we feel that we needed to provide uh, to keep and make sure that people have the confidence to buy from Sheffins. And what percentage of, the, of your sales will be exported? So it varies hugely. It can vary from anywhere sort of 50, 60 percent up to 70 to 80 percent. It depends on what we've got, the stock and the, the demand at the time. Uh, we're not seasonally affected like we used to be. There tends to be good sort of demand throughout the year, uh, but it is a large proportion of what we do. Uh, Ireland is a, a very good supporter of Jeffins. There's a lot of machines go over there. We've got some fantastic buyers on the continent. We've got some fantastic Spanish, German buyers, French buyers, all of them, uh, Dutch. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's and you get a varied uh, sort of perspective on agriculture as well it's interesting talking to these guys because they all do their bit a, a little bit differently uh, so it's really fascinating to be honest to to uh, to deal with these people that's it and in terms of the machines that are coming into this into this sale ground where are they all coming from is it varied is it dealers private or so a lot of it's primarily trade to trade so there's a lot of trading machines um, but we get because we're in a hotbed of agriculture here on the Fenland uh, so we get a lot of very very good quality uh, straight from farm machines uh, and they really stand out as well they're always really well received um, uh, but it comes from all over we've got some great guys in Denmark who are great supporters of us they can bring across some really quality machines we've got some importers of goods as well uh, so people that sort of go and source on the continent bring them back they're UK traders um, so they put them in uh, and yeah we've got a great stock of dealers throughout uh, and retailers throughout the UK that we, we draw upon um, I mean the, the, the levels of stock are quite low at the moment um, because there isn't the trade-ins coming through because the new machines aren't being delivered but all we're doing at the moment is selling uh, less for more ultimately there's a lot of demand for this kit that we're getting where it keeps coming from is always <laughs> a marvel because you know we're, we're 300 plus tractors here you know it's a lot of machines uh, and that's month on month you know we're selling more tractors than anybody else uh, and it is fascinating where they keep coming from it's always a marvel each month to 
see the huge rows of, of tractors. So for people like me that uh, sadly have never been here, can you just sort of describe the atmosphere on sale there here when yeah. you do get those crowds here? Yeah, so I mean we do obviously the vintage sales here as well as the modern sales, so we would get, I mean, the, the sort of monthly sales, they're the business, so there we get a lot of, it's, it's a good buzz, you know, there's a, we got, we're booking in machines in the morning, uh, we've got caterers here, so there's a great opportunity for all different uh, sort of people to socialise, meet people or existing contacts, so there's a lot of buzz going, there's a lot of people and then uh, when the bell rings and we kick things off, uh, the first tractor's there waiting uh, and then everybody sort of piles into the auction hall, uh, we do our announcements, we get going, uh, the sort of tractors are put into uh, sort of brand blocks if you like so we've got masses fords uh, and then sort of later masses john deere's new hollands and things like that so you see people duck in and out that want those machines uh, you know when you get into a hot spot because the crowd sort of swells uh, and you know when the sort of the r series comes through there's always a lot of interest in those um, but yeah it's just there's a lot going on and it's just it's just interesting to catch up with people we've got some very very good auctioneers here some great backroom staff uh, we've got the online bidding so it's, it's frantic and yeah it's it's a real a real interesting place to be on a sale day and then on the vintage, it's completely, it's just berserk. It's just absolutely wild. We've got rows and rows of vintage tractors, machines, everything. We've got collectibles, uh, enamel signs, you know, and that is, that is really, as an auctioneer, that's when you really get going. I mean, that is really enjoyable to do because you're, you know, it's, it's a different atmosphere, um, but yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a great sort of service we provide here. Now you mentioned uh, some of the staff and some of the team here on the, on the uh, sale ground. How many does it take to actually put this on? So any one time we've got over 20 staff here. Uh, so we've got six forklifts running full time. Uh, we've got a great uh, sort of admin staff as well. I mean, they're constantly taking inquiries on machines, condition reports. Uh, we've got directors, associates. We've got different levels of management. Um, there's everything going on. Nobody's proud. We all muck in, you know, whether it's driving a machine into place. Uh, we've got some new software now uh, where we can take all of our images from our phones. They get automatically uploaded to the website as well as videos. So everybody can get involved. And we've got a, a, a great sort of core team here. There's a long, long hour. Hours. There's a lot goes into this. There's a lot that people don't see. As I said, the, the auctioneering is quite a small part of what we do. There's an awful lot of work that goes into getting a, a 3,000 lot sale ready. And we're doing this every month. Exactly. So finally then, a uh, quick word on prices and where they're tracking. How are the sort of sales uh, progressing this year? Very well. Yeah, we're seeing uh, the pressures on quality secondhand machinery, whether it be here on site with the sort of decreased or, or the longer delivery times on new machines. Uh, farmers, traders are looking at good quality secondhand kit to bolster their forecourts, all their machinery inventory uh, and fleets. Um, and it is, yeah, prices are very, very strong. Um, you know, it's good quality, well presented, you know, it's hitting the button, it's making the money. Oliver, thank you very much for that insight, absolutely perfect. I think uh, what we'll do now, we're going to have a little uh, roll around, shall we? Yeah, let's have a wonder. Spot on. So Oliver, tell us about this beauty, John Deere 3050. So this is lot 1216 and uh, as some people will know, Bill Pepper, who's a director and partner here at Cheffins, is retiring at the end of this month. Uh, he's been at Cheffins for over 30 years and a lot of the success here at the sale ground has been down to Bill Pepper. Uh, he introduced the drive-through and different initiatives here to increase the services that we provide. Uh, and one of our long-standing and very valued clients has very, very kindly donated this John Deere 3050 wow. uh, to be sold with all proceeds going to charity uh, and Bill Pepper could choose a charity closest to his heart so he chose Alzheimer Research UK so this will be put through on Monday uh, and this will be probably one of the last tractors that Bill Pepper will sell uh, so we are very very grateful to our long-standing client who asked to remain anonymous which is fine um, so yeah we hope this goes well. Right, we must be on to one of the most sort of diverse and varied parts of the sale ground, which is, uh, well, we're basically surrounded by implements. 
We are, this is what we call our machinery section. Uh, so the guys have got a fantastic inventory here. Uh, we've got some great guys that are constantly consigning stuff, calling people, trying to get new fresh lots in. Uh, so we've got, I mean, over 300 lots in here, uh, probably verging on 400 lots actually. Uh, so we've got everything from plows to tedders to drills to Ife Williams trailers to pallet tines, the whole, the whole nine yards really. Um, and yeah, so this is part of our timed online. So since the pandemic, this is something that we shifted to timed online uh, and our purchasers and vendors and clients seem to prefer this method because it allows them to concentrate on the tractors and the plant uh, and then once they know what they've bought on that they know what space is available on transport lorries things like that uh, so then they can turn their attention to machinery um, so that seems to work very well for us it's literally like you're putting on an agricultural show month in month out you're like you're doing it over and over and over again absolutely it's a free show you can attend and buy something that's the way to look <laughs> at it um, but yeah I, you know that's the that's the joy of the job it's diverse it's always something that comes in you've never seen uh, you've got to value it then you've got to sell it and realize you're miles out but it's uh, you know it's enjoyable you know and we sell everything from these utvs we've got hundreds of lots of atvs compact tractors i was going to say we've come down to the end of the site where there just is a plethora of you know like you say a small kit like this yeah, well that's what we pride ourselves on, being a one-stop shop. We are a sweet shop for the machinery enthusiast, really. Uh, we've got everything from cement mixers, you know, it's, it's fantastic. So, yeah, people can really come and find what they want, really. And what's the sort of popularity on uh, vehicles like this? Yeah, so we're, we're near new markets, so there's quite a, you know, the big horse fraternity around here. So these machines are very, very popular. They're popular all over, to be honest. Um, but yeah, they're very usable. We've got, uh, there's some big sort of country states around here as well, which people use them on, as well as sort of more domestically. So. Yeah, yeah, there's always demand and because everything's online you know it's, it's accessible for everybody really brilliant let's see what else we can find absolutely right oliver it looks like we're in uh, well i'd say a tire alley yeah so this is the tire section of the sale we've got hundreds of lots here of quality used and new tires uh, they're always very very popular in the sale people use them to make up loads or add to new machines they bought that the tires might be down on uh, they're put in by retailers dealers there's a lot of ex farm stock here as well straight from farm stock uh, they're all in varying degrees of condition some are just tires some have got rims uh, but they're always very very popular i was going to say condition wise because most of the used tires that i know of they, they usually kind of past it but these look kind of all right, some of them. Yeah, we have, them. we have to vet them because obviously disposing yeah. of tyres is quite expensive. So we only take good quality high tread tyres, really. Um, some might be slightly damaged, but good for, for sort of general use. Um, but yeah, we try and keep the quality up. We don't want uh, some sort of bald, slick tyres uh, really sort of clogging the sale up. So we try to avoid those. Perfect. So, Oliver, uh, apart from being stood in front of this striking orange Massey Ferguson, which I presume is uh, some sort of ex-industrial spec or something like that, whereabouts are we on the... Uh on the sales site now. So we're here at our bespoke drive through area now. This is something that uh, we launched probably five or six years ago uh, and has revolutionized what we do. Uh, it's upped our selling rate. It's sort of parade style, if you like. Um, and we've got our bespoke building here where our um, sort of potential purchasers can sit, watch the items drive through in the comfort uh, in there. We've got the auctioneer in the corner uh, doing his bit. Uh, and then the, we've got a team of drivers that come each month as well as our forklift operators here, which oversee it uh, and they drive the machine through uh, they're stopped sold and then moved on uh, and it's a fantastic site uh, and uh, the pandemic allowed us or the lack of public on site allowed us to do some improvements we just had some freshly laid concrete uh, which looks fantastic and uh, yeah it's a great facility Quite dazzling. For us. it is dazzling <laughs> absolutely it helps with the town but it's a fantastic facility uh, and it allows for good smooth operation of machines um, but yeah this is where the guys book in photograph um, and they do their videos as well sort of pre-sale so it's sort of consistent on the website uh, and then yeah they just sort of keep keep running them through right oliver on to a rather fine lineup of massey ferguson's is this the uh, the uh, major export uh, opportunity you were mentioning before yeah so this is what we class as tractor cell two uh, so these are primarily sort of export masses what we call uh, as well as a few fords here and bits and pieces uh, there's rows and rows and rows of, of sort of Massey 500, well 100, 500 uh, and the very desirable 200 series as well. Uh, and these primarily are bought by the Sudanese trade. Uh, there's also dealers in the UK that buy these and export them themselves. Um, but yeah, there's a great selection of uh, here and we, we sell a lot each month. And what's driving the popularity of these particular tractors? So Sudan has been an emerging sort of agricultural nation in terms of uh, the, the sort of um, what they're producing. So uh, they look to these sort of good basic mechanical machines uh, that they can export, they can put in containers uh, and then put back together the other end and their workforce can use a good reliable machines like this trusty 135 uh, and it just suits their demand. A simple tractoring kit form? 
Very much so, <laughs> absolutely. We've got a guy here, uh, John Mitchum. He's taking these machines to bits all day, every day. Uh, so we've got a full-time guy sort of uh, taking the wheels and tyres off, the cabs off, they don't need the cabs on uh, out there. He containerises them, uh, puts them in, marks them all up, and then it's a bit of a jigsaw when they get uh, the other end, but it's all numbered up and everything else, so it seems to work. So you've got a, a market for the cabs as well that uh, you take off? Yeah, very much so. So the good bits like the handles uh, and bits and pieces appeal to our vintage fraternity as well. So, uh, you know, nothing gets wasted really. Um, but the holy grail in here is the Massey 290. That's what they really look for. That's that is, the one. That is the one. That's the Rolls Royce, that is. And, and it's amazing to see when they bought one, there's sort of absolute pleasure in their face. There's a lot of handshaking and bits and pieces. So, yeah, a good Massey 290, that's what they're really looking for and they can make in excess of seven or eight thousand. Well, how's this? So Oliver, it looks like we're in kind of a Massey Ferguson graveyard, so to speak. Yeah, so this Purgatory is... Purgatory almost. Absolutely. <laughs> so this is our sort of uh, tractor export area. So this is, this is these tractors are probably primarily destined for Sudan. Uh, this is sort of the finished product here, but we've got a team here that dismantling the tractors, take, say, taking the cabs off, taking a lot of the tin work off, some of the tyres as well. Then they're containerised, uh, and then the items marked up to go with that machine. And then at the other end, I'll say it's a bit of a jigsaw, but then they're put back together. Um, but there's a guy here working almost 24-7. Um, excuse the dust. Um, uh, and, and just sort of dismantling these to make sure we can maximise what's exported in the containers. Right, and when it gets to the other side, uh, do you ever get any feedback from you know your customers over there? Yeah, you know, they're... the tractors, how long they're still going for? It? Not really. I mean, they keep coming back, so there's clearly a huge market for it. It's slightly subsided by different trade embargoes and things like that. But at the moment, the trade's pretty good. Um, but they're very discerning on what they want now. Before they bought pretty much everything, but now they just want a few, you know certain things. It is a bit price sensitive as well. Um, but yeah, they're great mechanical machines. Massey made a good tractor in the 70s, uh, or 60s, 70s, and 80s, uh, and a lot of them are still going. Uh, and a lot of parts are interchangeable so they can keep things going. Right, on to plant world. It looks like you've got a fair old line up here as well. Yeah, so as well as agricultural machinery, we've got a fantastic plant section. So this is our plant sale. So we've got everything from telehandlers, uh, 3CXs to excavators, uh, to planers, uh, dumpers, generators, mini diggers, a whole lot. So yeah, it's a great entry here. And do these tend to stay in the UK or do a lot of these go abroad as well? So yeah, a bit of both really. So there's great trade to Sri Lanka for 3CX JCBs. There's a huge demand out there and then they sort of uh, hop on to other countries and bits and pieces. Uh, there's a lot of uh, farmers buy some of these excavators for maintenance, ditch work and things like that on their farms. Uh, the dumpers are used by the building trade as well as some of the uh, sort of uh, commercial spec uh, telehandlers as well as yeah, farmers buying uh, you know the sort of ag spec telehandlers as well. But there's a, there is a short but huge demand for plants at the moment. Yeah, and I've just noticed, uh, kind of speaking of plant, uh, there's some sort of obscure machine back there which kind of uh, sort of looks like a uh, sugarcane harvester, but where did that come from? So that's been consigned one of our regular clients. Uh, yeah, we, we're happy to have a go at anything here, really. Um, so that was formerly a sugarcane harvester and is now uh, a, a, a willow harvester. So somebody's adapted to it. But yeah, a little bit different. But yeah, we're happy to have a go. Right, so that'll just effectively sit there until someone says, I'll, I'll, have, have, a, yeah. I'll have a punt on that's that. If you've got a rogue willow problem, then that's just for you. <laughs> Perfect. So, Oliver, we come to the end of our whistle-stop tour of the uh, the famous, the now, well, I'd say pretty much legendary Chefin's Sale Ground. Yeah. Um, I suppose, just to finish with, just give us a bit of an insight into the backroom stuff, really, because we've, you know, we've walked around here today and it's just vast the amount of kit, but with all that kit must come a mountain of paperwork that's about year high. Yeah, well, Chevin's prides itself on being Europe's largest monthly machinery auctioneers. Uh, we conduct a sale every month without fail, barring a pandemic. Um, so yeah, there's an enormous amount of work that people don't see. The, the sale day is a culmination of a massive amount of work. We've got a fantastic backroom staff here, um, as well as frontline um, auctioneers and everything else. Uh, there's a huge amount of paperwork that goes into it. Post Brexit, there's been a lot of, uh, obviously, export, export paperwork that's changed. We've been obviously existingly doing it, um, but it's just sort of been heightened post Brexit. There's a lot of T1 documentation, the side of phytosanitary side of things. Uh, there's the booking in, the cataloguing, the photography, uh, the physical moving of machines. Um, but we're very, very fortunate here. We've got a tremendous uh, group of staff, there's a lot of camaraderie, there's a huge amount of effort goes in. The closer you get to the sale, sale day is the sort of peak, but that is the tip of the iceberg really, is the sale day. Uh, but there's a, lot of, there's a lot of work that people don't see, uh, and it's a huge, huge effort goes into putting these sales on every month. Uh, well on that note, I think we'll wrap up before the dust gets the better of our voices. 
but yeah, absolutely fantastic tour of your uh, sail ground here at Sutton. Uh, fascinating insight. I, along with probably many people uh, back home, probably didn't realise how much is involved. Uh, obviously, it's quite a bit. So yeah, once again, thank you very much for your time. It's Perfect. been a pleasure having you, James. Thank you very much. Cheers.